Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to use Word to analyze your data from the Projectile Motion Lab and in future labs. So to begin, I'm going to go to Layout, Margins to Narrow. This allows me to still print but maximizes my space. I'm now going to go to Insert a Table, and this will be an 8 by 7 table, and you will see why shortly. I like my data centered, so I highlight everything and I center the column. I mean, I center all of the entries. And then I like the top row to be emboldened. Up here is where I put the titles for the quantities. So I'm starting with launch angle. The units need to go in parentheses. Units and uncertainty always at the top. Uh, I'm going to go to insert a symbol. In this case, the symbol needs to be degrees. These are my recently used. If the degree symbol is not part of your recently used symbols, go to more symbols. And the degree symbol is under Latin 1 supplement. You'll see it right here on the right-hand side. Insert, close. My parentheses. Now there is going to be an uncertainty with this angle. It typically is the precision of your measuring device. The uncertainty symbol is represented using a delta. Go to insert, more symbols. This is under Greek and Coptic. And here is my delta symbol, insert, close. Delta, I'm going to use theta as my symbol for the angle. Again, if you don't see that, go to more symbols. It's under Greek and Coptic. Here's the lowercase theta and the capital theta is up here. You'll see the lowercase just below the size symbol. Uh, delta theta equals, I'm going to insert a plus or minus symbol. Plus or minus is Latin 1 supplement. You'll see it here underneath the inverted exclamation mark. Insert close. Plus or minus 0. Point, I think it's 1 degree on those protractors associated with the launchers. And now I input my values 15.1, uh, 25.0, oops, not tab, uh, 35.3 or 0. 0.4, 45.3. I have 55.0 and maybe 65.1. If all of yours are 0, 0.0, that's fine. Just make sure the precision of your uncertainty matches the precision of your measurement. This is a must. Now I'm going to show you what to do with these three um, columns because these three entries are going to be for my trial data. So I highlight the top three uh, uh, column entries, I right click, I'll go to merge cells, I right click again, I go to split cells, I split these one column but two rows, so this will be the uh, launch range, uh, the units are in meters, and the uncertainty associated with this range, delta R equals, I'm going to use that plus or minus symbol, zero point, I believe it's a centimeter with the measuring tapes, which you'll have to double check, 0 0.01 meters, and then I will go to split these, uh, this row into three columns. So I'll go to right click that, split cells, three columns, one row. And then I will title these trial one, trial two, and trial three. And I will put in random values just so we can analyze these. Maybe this is 5.13, 5.13, 5.12, 5 and maybe over here, down by the 55, I'll have 9.60. 9.68, 8, and 9.73. And this is where the average launch ranges will go. So the units are meters again. The uncertainty symbol delta R, control plus average, control plus again, equals the symbol plus or minus. The average range, the average uncertainty in the range comes from the biggest range in your trial data over two. So underneath the table, you need to have sample calculations. So this is for the average range uncertainty. I will do the biggest range. So imagine this is my smallest range in the trial data. It only goes from 5.13 to 5.12. But if I look down here, I can see that these trials, they range from 9.73 to 9.60. So this is where I get my average uncertainty. I do 9.73 minus 9.60. That gives me 0 0.13. 
divide by 2, and this becomes 0 0.065. However, I want to stick to the precision of the original measuring device. I don't want to go beyond that, even in my average. So I think with this number, and indeed in all uncertainties, it's better to overestimate your uncertainty, your error, than underestimate it. Underestimation of uncertainty can have serious consequences. So I'm going to round this to 0 0.07 meters. So that's what my average launch range uncertainty is, 0 0.07 meters. So you can see that's really nice. And I, these are just some random values. This is where I would put my average data. Remember, in Excel, you only plot averages. You do not plot trial data. The trial is just a record of what you did, your, your data collection process. It's not something that you plot on a graph because it contains too many random errors. You can see I've resized these. And now this will be the uh, uh, launch angle, but this time this will be in radians. And the uncertainty in these, symbol delta symbol theta equals symbol plus or minus, you'll need to convert 0 0.1 degrees into radians. So I'm going to show you in the next video how to do that with Excel, but just so you know, degrees times pi over 180 gives you radians. Okay, uh, this will be sine of 2 theta. Whoops, did not mean to insert an equation. Insert the symbol theta. And this will be in radians. The, the sine of the 2 theta, where theta is in radians. And this will have an uncertainty. You're going to have to calculate this. So I'm going to show you how to do this. However, you can also do this in Excel. Sine, these will be the uncertainty, sine 2 pi uncertainty values. These are unitless. Sine 2 theta is unitless. Sine 2 theta's uncertainty will also be unitless. So I think for this level of physics, the best way to get the sine of the uncertainty values is, uh, is like this. Okay, we're doing sine of 2 times the angle. So we're doubling the angles. That means in accordance, we'll also have to double the uncertainties. So the way I would show the uncertainty values for each of my different launch angles would be like this. I would do 2 times the launch angle in radians for each measurement, 2 times theta sub r. That way you know that this is meant for radians. You'll have plus sine of 2 times the uncertainty, the radian uncertainty. Okay, and then you will also have to look at the same angle. You'll get sine of 2 times the symbol theta for this measurement, radians, whoops. Minus sine two symbol theta okay so you need for each individual launch angle for each of these sine 2 theta values, you will need to add sine 2 times the, uh, the uncertainty in the radians. You'll subtract 2 times the uncertainty in the, the uh, radians. And then you will average these two values. So you do this formula, sine 2 times the angle in radians plus sine 2 times the average uncertainty in radians. For that same measurement, you'll do sine 2 times the angle in radians minus 
sine 2 times the angle in radians. You'll get two value, a value here, and you'll have a value here associated with this one angle. Let's say I had 15.1 degrees. Convert that to radians. Add sine 2 times that. Get a number here sine of 2 times 15.1 in radians minus sine of 2 times the radian uncertainty. So I'll have these two numbers. I take the difference between these two numbers and divide by 2. And this will become the sine 2 theta uncertainty value associated with this one a measurement of 15.1 degrees. You will need to show a single sample calculation for this, but in Word, I'm sorry, in Excel, we'll continue with this and I will show you how to get these sine 2 theta uncertainties, the launch angles and radians really quickly. So hopefully this part here makes sense. If not, follow me to the next video and I'll go in further detail. Uh, thanks for watching and study well.